everyone, Haley here from The Foiled Plan. If you are already a foiled friend, thank you for joining me again today. And if you're new here, welcome. I share a lot of different content on my channel. Things like design videos, Cricut crafts, foiling, dollar store DIYs, epoxy tumblers, unboxings, and pretty much anything related to running a small creative business. So if that sort of content interests you, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button to become a foiled friend and turn the notification bell on so you never miss an uploaded video. Now that you know a little bit more about my channel, let's jump into today's video on sewing. Hi everyone. I just woke up so my voice is a little bit groggy, so bear with me, but um, today we're going to do a sewing tutorial. I've not done a sewing tutorial before but um, I make these custom aprons. Basically, I, I buy the aprons just like this and then I customize them. And um, so sometimes I put logos on them for people and their businesses. Sometimes it's just like a gift, like this one says, world's greatest Nana. So I drew the design and hand lettered the words and then um, sublimated the design on the apron. Um, but the tricky thing is with some of these aprons is that the neck strap is so, so long. So for myself, I am tall, so I'm about 5'10", and this hangs really, really low. Like it shouldn't sit that low on your chest. Um, so I was YouTubing and trying to find a tutorial for how to make the pre-made neck strap an adjustable neck strap and I honestly could not find any videos so I figured it out myself and I thought you know what I am going to post a video of how to do this because the chances are if I was looking for a video on how to do this maybe somebody else out there was looking for a video on how to do this or maybe if you weren't maybe you'll end up doing this now that you know how to do it well hopefully you'll know how to do it after the tutorial but anyways let's get started so what you're going to need to complete this project is of course your apron um, a sewing machine I have mine already ready to go it's threaded up I'll turn it on so you can see the light uh, so that's ready to go and then also we're going to need something called a slide buckle now I use two of these but I only need the slide on one of them. So what I've actually done is pulled off the slide piece on the second one. And for that, I use pliers um, just because these are metal. The reason that I do metal is because if I have to go back and then heat press this again to like get some wrinkles out or anything, I'm not gonna worry about like a plastic slider melting. <laughs> So that's why I went with the metal, but you can of course do whatever kind you want. There's plastic ones that this piece doesn't move at all. It's just one solid plastic piece. So totally a personal preference thing, but these are called slide buckles and I got them on Amazon. I'll link them in my Amazon shop and down below if you're interested in these specific ones. They come in different sizes. So I just made, made sure that before I bought these, I measured this size here so that the strap was for sure gonna fit in here. It is a little bit snug, but it still works. I think it is completely fine. And then I also have my scissors and my seam ripper. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is actually cut this neck strap. We're not cutting it off. We're just going to um, cut it. And it doesn't matter which side you do this on. I typically do it on the left side. So when you're wearing it, this would be the left side. So what I do is you can measure this or you can eyeball it, it's completely up to you. I go about two to two and a quarter inches away from this seam line and I just cut straight across. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna take my scissors and try and cut it as straight as possible um, but again if it's not perfect that's okay because we're going to be folding it into itself anyways um, and then I'm not going to worry about this 
strap for now. So for this part, what I am going to do is take one of my slider buckles and this is the one that I don't need the center part on. So I'm just gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna kind of stick them underneath this section here. There's a big there's a big enough opening where I can get my pliers in there and then just sort of open it up like that. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And that should be enough to get it off. All right. So now we have just this piece done with the pliers. And what we're going to do is um, just slide this down. And you only really need to um, go like about halfway, but if it drops, it's fine. Because um, now what we're going to do is two folds. You can do one fold if you want, but I like my seam to be tucked in. So if it starts to fray, there's um, no issues. So first I do like a little tuck. So about a quarter of an inch. And then I'll take that and I'll fold it again, but I'll fold it all the way down. So this is why this comes up. Oh, can't see. So I'll pull this back up about halfway and then I fold it back behind itself so that it touches the top of the seam on the inside. Um, you don't want it on the outside. It'll just, it, it doesn't look as clean. So we'll do that again really quick. So we do the quarter and then the half fold. So then this is like this. And then that's, that's what it'll end up looking like. And then what we're going to do is stitch right along here and just go slow because it is really thick because this strap is already folded in half. You have um, like one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of fabric you're going through, if that makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, because of all of the folds. So yeah, just go slow. So I, I'll be honest, I am very new to sewing. I've just been teaching myself. So terminology, I don't really know that much of. I have this dial here that basically shows like how wide your zigzag stitch is. And I have mine like between the one and the two. So it's not, I don't know. So it's a little bit thicker. And then this one, again, not sure what this actually means, but I have it on the F setting. If you know what that means, let me know in the comments below. Um, and then I have this on the middle setting here on the M. I think that's all I really need to let you know about this. Uh, so like I said before, I already have my sewing machine ready to go. I am using white Guterman thread. It's 100% polyester and this is 100% polyester. So this is the part that's a little bit tricky because you kind of have to do some maneuvering to get it in there. Um, but I like to flip it over and um, it's just easier to see it. So we're just gonna feed it in again slowly. You're gonna drop the foot and then we're gonna start off with a back stitch. So I'm gonna hold this down and try and find my foot pedal. <laughs> and again, nice and slow. And then that's it. I'm releasing over here and then I'm gonna start going forward. And you just wanna try and keep it as straight as possible because you'll be able to see the stitches on the other side. And if it looks wonky, it just doesn't look as neat and tidy. Okay, and now I'm gonna do a back stitch to finish it off. And I'm just kind of, I do like this V thing with my fingers. So I'm kind of holding the buckle and holding the rest of the fabric on the other side because I'm gonna slightly like pull back. Just, it's so thick, it's hard for the needle to get through and the foot to hold it there. Here we go. Perfect, okay, I'm gonna raise this up and then pull it out and 
find my seam ripper. Okay. And I just try and get it as close to the seam as possible. Or the, the stitching as possible, I mean. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So that seam is tucked under, so you're not gonna have to worry about anything fraying and then coming out the bottom. All right, so now we're ready to work on the other side. This is the side that's trickier, but I'll show you and it, you'll, you'll get it, it'll be okay. <laughs> Okay, so for this slider, we're gonna leave this piece on. We need that so that you can do the adjustments. If I am looking straight on at the front of the apron, you just wanna kinda like drape the strap back to how it would have looked when it originally attached, just because you don't want it to be twisted and then you're, you've got a funky strap. Okay, so this is how it would have sat. So what we're going to do with the buckle is start by feeding this strap underneath, up and over the center piece. So I just like move that over a little bit and then back through. So we go under, over, under, just like this. And then you can start to move that. And then from there, what we're going to do is um, taking this first slider buckle that we put on, we'll just call it a buckle now because there's no slider on it anymore and it's stationary. So we're gonna take that, again, we're looking at the front of the apron and we're going to go over top and then we're gonna pull through and I like to make sure that there's lots of space here to work with. So again, we went over top of the buckle and behind we're pulling through. Now this part is the tricky part. So I'll try and show it as, as clearly as possible. So this piece is behind the buckle. And then what I am going to do is I'm just gonna kind of flip this piece over so that you can see the slider piece from behind. And then I'm going to feed this underneath and then back out this side. And in order to do that, you might have to pull a little bit of this so that there's space like this. And we're going to go down and then back out the other side. This is tricky, like I said. Okay. We're gonna do the same folding technique that we did here. You can pull that back out if you want. Again, I like to make sure that we've got lots of space in here because I'm gonna have to stick this section underneath the sewing machine. So now this back piece here is what you're going to end up attaching this piece to. And at this point, I like to make sure that I've got all of my pieces in the right spot so that um, so I see, okay, if I attach this here, is this going to adjust properly? So it does slide to make it smaller or larger. So we're in good shape here. So that's perfect. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do that cold quarter fold. Actually, this did fray a little bit. So what I'm going to do just to make it clean is give it a little snip. So we're gonna do a quarter fold and we're gonna fold it towards the back piece here. Now, um, it doesn't have to be this much. So quarter fold 
and then one more fold over top. So it's folded onto itself. That's a little bit larger than a quarter inch, but that is, that's fine. It's probably like half an inch. Um, okay. And now what we're gonna do is um, take this, the back piece, and we're going to lay it on there. Just making sure everything is tucked in there, everything is straight. And just kind of try and keep this front piece out of the way here. All right, and now it's time to do a stitch to piece it all together. Now this is even trickier than the first one just because you have to try and keep this sort of out of the way, keep everything straight, but we can do this. Okay. Dropping the foot, making sure that front piece is not in here because if you sew this all together, it will not be adjustable. Okay. Oh, my thread's not under my foot. There we go. I'm gonna start with that back stitch again. I know it's tough to see, but, and bring it forward. And now I'm going to end it with a back stitch. All right, so that's what it should look like. I know it's not super pretty, but that one is tucked underneath. So now we have the adjustable strap. So if you pull it down this way so that the buckles are close together, that is gonna give you the largest neck strap. And then if you make them as far apart as they can go, you're going to have the smallest neck strap. So. Quite a difference and it's easy to move but um, they will stay in place like where they need to be when you actually have them on just got a little twisted there yeah so this is something like I, I offer currently anyways um, I offer aprons and customization of aprons and whatnot on my website I offer two options so I offer the option that doesn't have the adjustable neck strap and then for a little bit extra I will sew an adjustable strap just like this. So yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful um, and uh, maybe somebody else that's out there that's looking for the same type of video I was looking for <laughs> a month ago, maybe you'll find this uh, to be exactly what you are looking for. Um, anyways, I uh, hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.